Why is it whenever WWE has a taped event that people on the internet feel the need to post spoilers? I'm going to talk more about that and also what happened on Monday Night Raw on this week's Monday Night Raw review powered by Google Hangouts and YouTube. Are you ready for your hot tag? Because if you are, it is time to work. Yo, what's up, guys? You got Nick Fugway here. And Mark Toronto. We're from Sports Entertainment tonight on AOC. And we thank you for tuning in to G WGS TV. Greetings, YouTube. You're working into another episode of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com. Slash Russell Gamer today is Tuesday, November 10th, 2015, which I believe right now is National Fallout 4 Day because uh, the Fallout 4 video game got released today. And um, I think a lot of people have been writing up excuses and doctor's notes for, so that way they can skip out work today to go play Fallout 4. But um, anyway, uh, beyond that, uh, last night was Monday Night Raw. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that and discuss uh, a, a few things that. I, I, that, that I definitely have on my mind, especially when it pertains to Monday Night Raw and the propensity for people on the internet to post spoilers of taped events, like it's a good thing. But um, anyway, let me introduce uh, um, my co-host on the review this week, ladies and gentlemen. You know him as our resident music mogul over on YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV is the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Let's have some fun with this, or at least try to. Well, let me start up the discussion a, a little bit with uh, what I was just uh, uh, referring to is the fact that for some reason, Internet fans uh, feel the need that they have to post spoilers of taped events, wh whether it be for like WWE, TNA or any kind of promotion. They feel like, you know, what? let's actually spoil the show. Let's ruin the, or the everyone else's fun, ruin the anticipation of what's going to happen on the show by spoiling it on the internet so that way we can get as much attention to ourselves as we can to and try to ruin everyone's good time what are the things i hate i hate about spoilers is the fact that th they try to ruin the show and, you know and it doesn't it doesn't really rest in the wrestling industry in itself you know it, it goes for like people with tv shows you know if they will watch uh, you know if you miss your, one of your favorite live shows and you want to wait until you get a chance to see it before you go on the internet and talk about it but then when you pop up on your uh, your social media sites like your facebook and your twitter and you got these inane ignorant people who decide that they don't care if you've seen the show or not they're going to go ahead and post a spoiler for it. what it does it takes the fun and the enjoyment out of watching the show i know a lot of people a lot of you out there are going to be saying oh you're talking about enjoying watching wwe what's wrong with you i'm i have been a wwe fan since the 1980s regardless of where the product has gone as of late and i'd like to truly enjoy the show and actually watch and try to anticipate what's going on i don't want my shows being spoiled Lance, I don't know how you feel about the whole situation, but that's personally how I feel, and that's one of the reasons why I hate spoilers. Yeah, I mean, shoot, I'm pretty sure the spoilers get out every freaking week for SmackDown. Yeah, I, and I avoid them like the plague. I would, but I don't watch SmackDown, so it really don't really bother me. But anyway, uh, then I mean, shoot, that's even a, it's even a problem. But in Tarantino's movie, he's supposed to have a called a. Uh, I think the hateful eight it got pushed back like two years because somebody broke his claws and started talking about the movie he had to go back and re rewrite stuff to keep scores from happening yeah and that's one of the things that fans these days need to realize that not everybody likes spoilers including yours truly oh come on billy you know you love spoilers <laughs> oh, no. Hell no. Even when video games, apparently there's a big rumor going around that, especially when it pertains to Fallout 4, that somebody on YouTube went ahead and spoiled the ending of Fallout 4 because they did not want anyone to show support to Beth Bethesda, the, the, cre the, the creating company behind Fallout 4. And again, one person 
didn't want everybody else to show support for Bethesda, you know, and that was the only reason why uh, rumored that this guy spoiled Fallout 4 in the ending. So, spoilers are not a good thing, guys and gals, especially when you try to anticipate like good video game endings. Um, and whenever I do DVD reviews, I always like post a uh, like a uh, warning that warning if you have not watched this yet it, it will be a spoiler so if you don't want to watch it click off and especially when it pertains to these reviews if you haven't watched monday night raw yet click off on this video because you don't you don't want to get spoiled you don't want spoilers for, for the show before you've watched it yet but um anyway i think we've dwelled enough on that one let's get to monday night raw um one of the big things that um that everybody was tr uh, was anticipating is how would wwe follow up and address the situation of the Survivor Series tournament and in what direction it would go for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, rumors out there that Roman Reigns seems to be the guy that's going to be pushed. Apparently there's reports out there, especially from the IWC, that uh, Roman Reigns was set to win. But uh, then again, those are rumors. There are not confirmations of stories. So I don't know why people t uh, bring any validity to those kind of stories. It's just beyond me. You know, why did they look into these things and think, oh, this happened and this happened. So it's too coincidental. So it must be that. I don't go that route. I don't go that route. But anyway, the way they would open up Monday Night Raw is, you know, they would try to go Roman Reigns. Triple H will try to go Roman Reigns into becoming a part of the authority by saying, you know what, you don't actually have to be in the tournament since you already won the number one contendership. Uh, this tournament could be for the person, for the, uh, for the winner to have the right to face you at Survivor Series if you become our guy. And when Roman Reigns turned him down and ends up working a match against the Big Show. Now, uh, I don't know if you've seen the reports like I've seen it, Lance, but apparently there are the reports and I, and I think probably now with the because uh, as of late we've been seeing uh, Big Show wear a, breeze, a brace a brace a, br a brace uh, on his knee that uh, Big Show as of late has been working with um, a knee injury well let's face it he's a giant he is a heavy he is a heavy man and he's getting old so sometimes parts wear out yeah, and, and I love how at one point in the match he screams, I'm a giant, I can do what I want. Except when he faced Brock Lesnar at the Go to Hell tour and Brock Lesnar totally pwned your ass. Um, I'm, I'm just saying, WWE creative plays their storylines out really, really weird. They, they portray Big Show as this big, unstoppable giant in, in the wrestling industry. And then when he faced Brock Lesnar, he got his ass totally kicked. And in this match, he ends up losing... Roman Reigns when Roman Reigns hits the spear. I really don't understand the direction WWE Creative is going, and whoever's on there as we're being, now being joined by the host of Hardcore Wrestling Radio, uh, Rick Head. Rick, how you doing? I've had better days, but I'm hanging in there. Oh, your day can always start out well, Rick, when you always have a fresh set of batteries. And uh, your day can always get better when you have your, all your little set of duckies. <laughs> well, did I turn into HWR last night? Yes, I did. Um, yeah, and well, you know what? Last night was a fucking whole shit because I, I had all my OBS software set up. And, of course, little did I know that all I was pretty much doing was talking to myself. Which sucked because I didn't realize that until after the show. And I'm like, what the hell? Now, folks, if you don't know how uh, OBS or streaming software, sometimes it can be very fucking quirky. And I was not happy. It was just totally sucked. So my raw review, my in the moment whole, whole storyline was gone. Shit, I, I am so yeah. And the batteries was not for me. It was for my kid. Oh, okay. So I'm glad we got some clarification on that. But uh, one of the things we're in the middle of discussing is the fact that. Uh, the lapse in intelligence in WWE creative, especially when it pertains to the direction of the, of the Big Show gimmick, and, and one of the things I was referring to is Big Show screamed during his match last night that I'm a giant, I could do what I want. And yeah, you may scream that, but when you face Brock Lesnar at the Go to Hell tour, you got your ass totally owned by Brock Lesnar, and then Big Show ends up losing to Roman Reigns via a, a spear. And 
I just don't think WWE Creative is doing a very good job right now in WWE. Well, what do you expect? I mean, come on, let's be honest. Uh, you know, Big Show is uh, winding down his career. He's trying to do that one last streak where he can beat the hell out of people and be this monster. But the problem is, is when you are for so long made a joke and you're trying to do this Hummer Giant thing. It was working for a little bit, but it was a, again, it was a short run. Um, you know, and I've talked about this before on other shows. Braun Strowman could very well be hanging heading down that direction pretty soon because Braun Strowman, hate to say it, yeah, he's a powerhouse, but his wrestling skills suck. Yeah, he's grand and do shit. Yep. But um, anyway, up next we're gonna have Titus O'Neil and Kevin Owens. There's no doubt about that. But one thing I will tip my hat to is the fact that how um, Titus O'Neil was able to uh, really get up there for the pop-up power bomb last. That was actually pretty cool to see. Yeah, match kind of like this to me. This whole uh, first round, friggin' predictable. But yeah, that was an impressive pop up out loud. There was one match that I did not get right, but I will not reveal that to Rick or anybody else until we get to that. Um, Becky Lynch and Paige. Uh, first thing I want to applaud that there was no Bella in sight for this match. So. <laughs> So that, 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 that was good to see. So at least we would have a somewhat decent match between Becky Lynch and Paige. And that's exactly what we had, a somewhat decent match between Becky Lynch and Paige. Apparently Paige is quite popular in the UK for some odd reason. Oh yeah, she's from the UK. Um, it, it was a really good match, but how about this? Paige would try to uh, roll up and do the dirty pin by holding onto her tights. Becky would counter that with her own roll and do the exact same thing. The Paige, Becky Lynch would end up getting the win. And then Paige would take it out on Becky Lynch and ends up doing the PTO on the announce table, which then would prompt out Charlotte to come out to a chorus of boos from the UK crowd. And next thing you know, Paige just runs off and then they and then you transition into the ending of that. So that was just pretty much um, what that was. Uh, one of the things Kevin Owens said on his promo before the match, Rick, is that he was discussing the fact that the UK fans are considered the most intelligent wrestling fans in the world. Would you agree with that assessment? Uh, you know, I, I think that was just a promo just to get the fans uh, popping, to be honest with you. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of intelligent fans everywhere. Um, yeah. If you've noticed, though, again, as you mentioned earlier, I noticed that the fans were really heel-based. They were popping for the heels more so than they were popping for the baby faces. And I think that just goes to show that they were kind of just doing that as a... Almost as a mockery. Yeah, yeah, I, I can, I could kind of agree with, with what you're saying about that one. Um, has anybody noticed as of late that WWE has been trying to turn Dolph Ziggler into the next Shawn Michaels? Let, let me clarify what I'm talking about. Let me elaborate on it. Uh, first off, the change in Dolph Ziggler's gear looks very much like Shawn Michaels used to. And then, as of late, he really hasn't been using the zigzag as his signature move. Especially when it pertains to Don's, uh, his match versus The Miz. What did he use for the finish? He used a super kick on The Miz to get the finish. Am I the only one out there that's just just noticing the fact that they, they're they trying to pattern Dolph Ziggler into looking into the next Shawn Michaels? Well, I think, to be honest with you, that was... They tried to do that all along, and it's a mistake. And let me tell you why. And I, I think Shawn Michaels said it to himself when he was talking... Said, said it himself when he was talking to um, Seth Rollins a couple of weeks ago. And he said this, and you know what? I'm not trying to be somebody else. I'm always just trying to be me. And that is the problem with today's roster. You look at the Ascension, they're trying to be LOD. You look at this guy, uh, Tyler Breeze. He calls himself the Prince of uh, Pretty. I call him the Prince of Pretty, he's pitiful. Um, and he reminds me of like a watered down Rick Martel. You know, and, and now you have Dolph Ziggler, and people couldn't didn't know whether he was trying to be Billy Gunn or Shawn Michaels, and it's really coming to that big mistake that they're trying to make these guys something they're not. They need to be themselves. When it pertains to the next segment now with Alberto Del Rio and Zeb Coulter, that that promo last was in my in my personal opinion a little bit edgy because they were kind of going, well, I would think. I would say political on that UK crowd with some of the things Zeb Coulter has to say. Well, for Zeb, it really wasn't that 
edgy because remember all the we the people thing that's tame for Zeb Coulter yeah because it was all oh, you wet bats or y'all need to go back across the border and die yeah yeah that that is um, what Zeb Coulter is good at doing is trying to incite the crowd by uh, playing to the political aspect of what where the country's been or whatever the country's doing at that time, especially in the UK. So, but we'll leave what Zeb Coulter had to say to that. We're not we're not exactly going to repeat that because I definitely don't agree with what 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 was said about that, especially when it pertains to Germany, uh, to Russia, to Vladimir Putin, and stuff like that. We definitely don't. I definitely don't agree with what they said, and I can understand why it was said to gain heat. For uh, Zeb Coulter and Alberto Del Rio from Ex America, and, and I gotta say they did a, per- a really good job doing that. Natalia and Naomi, and once again, uh, we get a round of applause for Novella's in sight. Uh, man, Natalia and Naomi was indeed a good match, but I really don't know wh- wh- where they're what they're doing right now, Rick, with this whole situation because apparently it they're building an angle. Where, where it appears to be Team Bad versus Natalia. Are they just doing it to give them something to do? It sounds like it right now because, as you said, the Bella Twins are gone. And they, if you've noticed also uh, by our absence is uh, Alicia Fox. And, uh, you know, I think what they should have done is, at this point now is take advantage of that. They should have had Alicia Fo- Team Bad stop beating up on Alicia Fox. And they also had Natalia. Now that those two come together. We've said it more than once. These groups need to stop mixing it up because it's not working. You know, that's why Paige kind of broke off. Now, if all these other, you know, like, demons stop breaking up and splitting up, it'll work out. So, that's what they need to do. Yeah. And the only thing I put on Facebook last night, the Lance, where it pertains to that is, Sasha Banks is on TV, all is good. Yeah, I, I, that's actually what I think this whole feud between Team Bad and Tay and Natalya is going. Because if you know, she kept she kept mocking them. We want Sasha. We want Sasha. We want Sasha. Um, up next we have Sheamus and Cesaro. And one of the things the IWC decided to spoil last night on social media was the whole confrontation between uh, King Barrett and this uh, England footballer Wayne Rooney. Um, you know, if I piss off people who watch England football, I really don't care because I have no idea who Wayne Rooney is, and I don't watch. No, uh, First England. off, you're wrong. It's not football; it's soccer. There's only one football, and it has nothing to do with you know a, a little round ball. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure the Stunning Man actually might disagree with that. I said might, might. I didn't say he would. I said he might. But um, anyway, it was this guy. And Wayne Rooney, apparently there was a confrontation, he ends up slapping um, King Barrett, and that was kind of like a half-ass slap in my opinion, but then again, it's an uh, it's a soccer player uh, acts to pass a slap to a, a wrestling guy. I mean, he, he's not going to know how to perfectly do the spot. So, yeah, I, I kind of expected a half-ass slap, and that's what we got. As far as the match goes, how is it, Rick, that Cesaro is probably one of the most overlooked guys right now in WWE, especially with that performance he gave against Sheamus last night. That was an unbelievable performance. Uh, You know, I think we said this more than once, that Cesaro is pretty much overlooked. He's been underrated, and even the, uh, the hardcore legend Mick Foley defined him as one of the most underrated wrestlers to date. And it's just, unfortunately, that's the higher-ups for some reason don't see him being over. And in fact, if you've noticed something, when they had the Cesaro section, which supposedly was given up by fans, I call bullshit on, because now they have all the other, you know, se- you know they have uh, all those exact same signs with the exact same print being for other wrestler section. And it's just uh, not working. And unfortunately, they stole the, the heat that was working for them. Um, Cesaro would use his hammerlock roll-up pin on Sheamus to pick up the win in advance into the tournament. Now, I made mention of the fact that I got one match wrong for Monday, for Monday Night Raw in, in the tournament. 
and it was Dean Ambrose and Tyler Breeze. And and let me explain why. And Rick, I know you you pretty much ready to jump on this one, but let me explain why that I thought Tyler Breeze was going to go over on Dean Ambrose, considering the fact that the winner of the of the, of the match in the next round was going to face Dolph Ziggler, and considering the fact that as of late they've been building an angle between Ziggler and Tyler Breeze, I figured that. You know, WWE would go in that direction and um, and have the angle continue in the tournament between these two guys. Well, you know what I hate to say, but I'm glad it didn't go in that direction because it would have been too obvious. It would have been just been like, you know, worse than predictable. It would have been like, uh huh, yep. And, and I have to say, I'm pleasantly surprised. Another issue that I would like to see, and of course, uh, people have talked about this more than once. You know, could we imagine maybe um, Dean Ambrose versus Roman Reigns in the finals? That's one of the things a lot of people on social media brought up last night is the fact that we could possibly uh, have that match. And, you know, and there's also that the, the huge rumor going out there about the supposed heel turn, especially when we had last time we had a tournament. And in fact, Lance brought this to my attention. It's the last time we had the Deadly Games tournament for Survivor Series. There was a heel turn. If I remember correctly, it was The Rock that turned heel in that tournament. And we could have another heel turn in the form of Dean Ambrose in this tournament. Is, is that a possibility that we could be seeing? It's a strong possibility, because keep in mind, at the opening segment, which you ta were talking about, you know, they were trying to get Roman Reigns to sell out, and Roman just says, uh-uh, not going to happen. Now, do we think that Dean Ambrose you know, will be his next target? Possibly. But uh, I really hope that doesn't happen, only because it would just be too obvious. Now... As far, real quick, as far as um, Seth Rollins, you know, is him being out for 69 months? When he returns, you can guarantee he's going to be a face. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially whenever whenever a heel wrestler is out for an extended period of time, the fans are just happy to see the guy back. So that's why he always works face for uh, uh, quite the time. Triple H was face during one of his comebacks, then he quickly uh, turned heel when he turned against Ric Flair, if you guys remember that. Yes. Uh, the New Day versus Neville and the Usos, for the love of God, this is a, this was an actual storyline in the UK that the, uh, WWE security tried to stop a, a, a family who apparently were huge fans of the New Day, and they were dressed as unicorns. I, I shit you not. Uh, you didn't have to shit me. I saw it. And another thing, a lot of the fans over in the UK seemed to like unicorns because they were going along with the whole unicorn, you know, lo you know, like gimmick or logo, whatever. And it was just like putting their uh, like their finger up to their head. I'm like, what? Have we got a bunch of losers in the crowd? <laughs> well, um, anyway, um, there was there were really a lot of good spots in this match, especially that plancha, that corkscrew plancha from. From Neville, uh, from Neville to everyone on the outside. Again, whenever you see Neville doing those kind of things, you just, your jaw just kind of drops because it's something you've never seen before. And you, usually you only see that kind of stuff on the indies or NXT or something like that. But whenever he does it on the main roster, it's just like like that. But uh, Xavier Woods would end up using the classic dirty pin, you know, his feet on the ropes to uh, get the win, on, uh, get the pin on Neville, giving the New Day the win. And one of the things about the ending of Monday Night Raw that pissed me off royally thanks to the stupid spoilers from the IWC on Facebook. And it's the appearance of The Undertaker and Kane double choke slamming Bray Wyatt. That whole ending to Monday Night Raw was ruined by spoilers. <sighs> You know what? I I, 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 I got to disagree. Well, there was a lot of spoilers. And if you read the spoilers, you're going to blame yourself. The only thing that I read was that he was backstage. Wasn't sure if he was going to actually be coming out, but he was set for SmackDown. So when I read that, I didn't read the spoilers, but it was too obvious he was going to come out. Yeah. You, you know, and, and you can blame the spoilers, but even if Raw was live and you heard that, you knew what was going to happen. Well, yeah, because of the fact that they're building up the angle of Wyatt Family versus Brothers of, of Destruction. And, and if they even go into Survivor Series route, which one, some of the rumors are still saying they're, go they're going, they're still going to need a couple of more team members to, uh, to make it four on four. So who else is out there? I mean, another rumor is Sting. Sting was supposed to be joining up with the Brothers of Destruction in this match. I've heard that rumor. And again, I I'm not totally against the concept of a Survivor Series 
match, uh, because like you said, there's a four guy, so they need the other four. So who would that fourth person be? Another name that was brought up to my attention uh, that of uh, somebody in the and uh, all the Facebook groups are are pointing out the demon Finn Balor. Maybe, but you know, uh, first off, he'd have to be coming up literally within the next week and a half. Uh, he's also right now in a major feud down at NXT, so, and he, uh, so if that happens, I'll be shocked. I think Finn Balor should be up there along with a few other guys that deserve to come, especially now. There's a huge gap at the top of the roster. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, anyway, overall score on Monday Night Raw this week, uh, being from the UK, is going to get a 3.25 out of 5. Um, it would have been a higher score, but some of the spoilers kind of brought it down for me. Um, the best match of the night, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to give it to Dean Ambrose and Tyler Breeze. I was actually uh, quite impressed, and I'm glad that they did not go to predictable route of putting Tyler Breeze over on Dean Ambrose, so that way they could set up the feud further between Tyler Breeze and Dolph Ziggler in the tournament. Instead, they may go, they may go the suspected route of uh, Dean Ambrose turning heel. We're not saying 100% definitely. We know for sure. Dean Ambrose is going to turn heel. We're saying it's suspected that as a possibility of something like that happening. Uh, worst match of the night? Uh, honestly, I wasn't too impressed with Natalia and Naomi, to say uh, to be honest. Um, it could have been a little bit better, but it just wasn't. And then, of course, with Team Bad beating her down at the end of the match was something we've already seen before, and apparently goes to the storyline of the of the angle they're building between Team Bad and, and Natalia, and evidently, possibly now, Sasha Banks and Natalia. But um, anyway, that's been my overall score and, and, and my picks for Best and Worst Matcher segment. Uh, Rick, over to you, your overall score and your picks for Best and Worst Matcher segment of Monday Night Raw this week. Obviously, the best segment is, you know, the, the finale where the other the brothers are starting to call out the Wyatts, and you can see that that storyline is building very nicely. Um, whether they're going to have Sting or not, you know, that can go in so many different directions. That might even be a set up for WrestleMania. The legendary Sting versus Undertaker with personal adults. Only because it's that that you plot to sell. Um, as far as the worst segment, there's a lot of predictability in these matches, um, especially the way they did. Uh, they put they pitted the heels versus faces for the whole thing, and I pretty much said, okay, a heel won this one, a uh, face is going to win this one. But they tried to switch around because they knew they had to move the matches around. They didn't go right down the line, which would have been so predictable. Um, so I'm hoping that on SmackDown, we see a lot more diversity and mix things around. Well, when it comes to Kalisto and Ryback, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But then again, the Lucha Dragons have surprised me before when they got the when they went over on King Barrett and Sheamus, so they might be a surprise there. You never know. Um, Lance, over to you. Your overall score and your picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw. Overall, I'll give it a three. I, I had to take some points away from them making the winners and losers so damn obvious in this first round. Uh... Best segments got to be the ending. Worst match because we've seen so many freaking times. I have to give it to Roman Reigns for Big Show. Understandably so. But um, anyway, guys and girls, on that note, what we're gonna know from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. What are your overall scores? What are your picks? Best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week. We definitely want to know what you guys out there have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Rick, where can fans check you out on HWR? Well, with my uh, OBS streaming uh, software, it is uh, not on the fucking fritz. You can always find me over at youtube.com slash HWR show. And if you want to join in the conversations, hang out with us in the Facebook group sections under the name HWR Channel. I think your microphone might need a little bit of a check up there as well. Lance, what can fans expect to see when they come visit your channel over on YouTube.com slash Lance from Lost TV? I got album reviews, NASCAR special videos, Redneck Lawman Cooking videos, music equipment reviews. Uh, every Wednesday night I go uh, live at Lance, with Lance Lost TV and friends. I never know who's going to show up, even Billy's buddy uh, Elmo. Uh. Hello, Donald Duck. Hi. Oh, shut up. <laughs> so hit me up on Twitter it's at Lance Monster TV and don't forget to subscribe to much more 
WTS TV is on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can ask me questions. Links will be provided in the description box below. And as always, guys and gals, I'll have a couple of videos in the annotations at the end of this video for you guys to check out as well. So with that being said, for the hardcore host of Hardcore Wrestling Radio, Rick Kent, and the incomparable Lance Moss from Lance Moss TV, I'm the Russell Gamer. Don't be Billy Bujo. Say we'll see you at the next Warp Zone. And you should have it. Check your battery. Alright, at least you're getting some upgrade circuits. Hey, wasn't there a bench around here? That is just... Wrong. Wrong on every level. That is just every sense of the word wrong. 